This video is going to be special for two reasons. One, short course truck, obviously. Second, I'm matching a shirt to the paint job on my truck. For those of you that followed from my Instagram posts on my last video, this is a Ken Block, Troy Lee, Di Troy Lee Designs inspired paint scheme that we went ahead and threw on our short course body. Looks super cool. And then this shirt is available through the Hoonigan website. And uh, yeah, just thought it'd be appropriate and really cool. So let's jump into today's video. Hey guys, my name is Ryan Styles Harris. And in this video today, we're gonna continue our discussion and progress on our short course truck. I have done some really awesome stuff, upgrading it and putting some more 5.0 parts into it. And I went ahead and I've done a couple track days with it. So I'm gonna kind of look at this footage and uh, hopefully explain what the truck has done and like why and how it's progressed from what it was when I first built it to what it was from my last track day. Cause there's been a significant change between the two. And I think that the results are pretty clear. Let's go ahead and jump into my first track day with it, which was right after I built it. Um, quick recap on the parts that we had on this day. We had built it as it was out of the box. And then we added the 5.0 steering rack, the elite steering rack, the 5.0 elite rear end with the C and D block. And then we put on the uh, 5.0 adjustable rear hubs. So everything else was the same. We had the stock transmission, the stock body mounts, stock, all that stuff. So the, ba the battery was running in the transverse uh, direction and it was, you know, shoved back because there's a little bit more room based on the layout of the gearbox, et cetera, et cetera. I think that this truck does fairly well in this box stock configuration, maybe in more of a natural environment, like an outdoor track or some looser tracks. The truck has a lot of rearward weight bias. It seems like it would generate some appropriate grip for those environments. However, when I took it over to SS, as you can see some of this running footage here, the truck accelerates fine, it jumps pretty good, but it seems to have a very uh, difficult time carving a corner smoothly. And what I mean by that is here you can see when you go to get into this corner and you let off, it just seems to like hitch and arc very aggressively. And I think a lot of this has to do with the massive rearward weight bias this stand-up transmission has and it just has that classic handling characteristic that i've felt before with these stand-up transmissions now like i said yeah. before i think that this would be fine in an outdoor track but at these indoor tracks you're going into the corner a lot faster you're just carrying more momentum and you really want the truck to have a more balanced a weight profile front to rear. It just doesn't seem to have that with the box stock setup. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. There were no alternatives when this truck came out. It was really all you had. You could play with some weight bias and move the battery around, but you're really gonna be stuck with that handling characteristic of a stand-up transmission. So, RC Life came out with a low rider conversion kit that does a couple things to this truck. One, you can immediately run a more current high grip style transmission configuration with the lay down transmission that comes in the 5.0 buggy. So now that's in here. You can also note that the battery is now mounted in a much more forward position and it's in line with the chassis. So you have a little bit more of a centered uh, point of gravity now that the battery is running in line and it's much more forward. So now your weight distribution is a little bit more evenly spread front to rear. I think Diddy did a really great job coming up with these battery mounts that actually use some of the components that the truck already had. Um, to do this, you do have to shave off uh, the original battery posts that come in the kit. So if you're hoping to use this and go back and forth, it might not work out that way. If you're planning on switching back and forth, you'll probably just have to have an extra set of side rails, just full disclosure. The ESC is now mounted behind the battery. Um, this, I don't know if you could really play around with it much because of how he has this battery cradle system installed, it seems that it would be really the only place that you could mount the ESC. 
and I apologize that my wires are super long and wonky looking, but I really didn't want to cut them short because if I go to an outdoor track and I want to go back to the stand up transmission and put the ESC back where it was, it's just much easier to just leave the excess wire. And then I know that it's always going to be an option and it's not going to be a problem. ESC in the back there. And then now right behind it, you have our lay down transmission. Now, one of the other significant things in this kit is going to be what it's referencing when it says this low rider conversion is that these aftermarket towers that he has made for this RC life kit. These towers are carbon fiber and they're super thick, which I imagine they're gonna be pretty dang durable. Really neat that he does use the front tower mount is the same. He just gives you a little bit of hardware so that you can mount it up. And so that's gonna stay exactly the same. I don't know the exact dimensional differences as to how much lower it is, but I would say that it's probably around two to three millimeters lower. Same thing goes for the rear. We're bringing everything down. We're just kind of trying to lower the center of gravity and just bring everything a little bit closer to the center so that the truck handles a little bit better. Carries a little bit more corner speed. It just doesn't do anything weird mid corner or produce any undesirable handling characteristics that you may experience with a stand up. When you do this low rider conversion, it is pretty much required that you do switch to a different shock in the rear if you want the proper ride height and sh suspension travel. Uh, I went ahead and linked down below the parts that I used to update my shock package to kind of take full advantage of this conversion kit. So I'll link all that down there below in the descriptions, links, all that. Just go find it down there because um, I honestly forget the exact millimeters and dimensions of the bodies these compared to stock. Now, one thing that was really interesting is as I'm running the truck at New Reds, it did have a much better handling characteristic, but I could see that now my front spring was way too soft. Now that I've taken a lot of that weight and I've pushed it forward, that front spring that was okay before, now it's immediately tipping and nose diving in almost every single corner. So I am going to go stiffer in the front spring and I think that I'm actually gonna go softer in the rear spring. Cause right now it's really hard for me to get this thing down to anything lower than 24 millimeters of ride height. Cause I know that if I find myself at a super high bite track, I probably need to be able to go down to like 22, 23 if necessary. But cool trick while I was at New Reds and I was struggling to get it below, I think 26 millimeters of ride height. I actually raised the rear hubs because for two reasons, the truck was traction rolling a lot and had a lot of grip everywhere. So raising the rear hub is something that I would naturally do. And that naturally gave me a lower ride height. So it was pretty cool that our 5.0 conversion variable height adjustment rear hubs actually came in handy and they worked at my first track day. Currently, as of this last New Reds day, we were running on slicks because it's an indoor sealed dirt surface track. So it's got a lot of grip and I'm at plus two on the hubs front and rear. Overall, I'm really happy with the, the handling characteristics that you gain with this low rider conversion. Now I know some of you out there may not want to invest. I think it's about $105 for this conversion kit, which full disclosure, I bought this out of pocket. I wasn't giving it to me for free or anything like that. So this is my own honest opinion of this kit. But it honestly is a top-notch kit in my opinion. It gives you a lot of good references, gives you some solid parts, and it gives you some really good performance on the track. I know that the short course truck class isn't exactly huge and thriving and super competitive these days, so it may not be totally justifiable to do something like this to your short course truck, especially if you're racing at an outdoor dirt track and your truck's doing fine. I don't see this as something that would be totally necessary. If you're looking for a little bit more speed and consistency and you race primarily at some indoor tracks with some higher bite conditions, I'd say that this thing might be worth it. You're probably going to gain a lot of drivability out of the truck and corner speed and consistency. That's ultimately going to be up to you to decide and see what you think for yourself. So. I'm actually going to include this little race clip here that I had um, running at New Reds 
I actually had to run against the stadium trucks because there wasn't enough short course truck guys to make our own class. So the stadium trucks are a little bit faster than me. Um, I know that it was a mixture of some of us have 13.5 motors and some of them had 17.5 motors. I personally have a 13.5 motor in here right now. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens in this main here. I thought it was pretty good. I'll keep most of the good bits in there and I'll cut out some of the dead parts and uh, I'll see you guys in just a second. I did it. Curve plus 17509. Behind him in row two, Ryan Harris. And in number three, Sean O'Hara. Number four, Renee Barton. All right, guys, here we go. He's good. He's Full good. field start again. Everybody on the horn. Less than five. See if Kermit can bring it home, the bacon. Here we go. We're on. Ryan going to be trying to take him out with a short push truck. Kermit right now coming up with double-double. That's going to be the killer today. And there they go. One and two. Sean Hara in the number three spot in the black truck. Here they come through over the center shoot. And there they go. Kermit for action great. And you got Sean Clark right there with him. It's top four right there coming over. Double-double. There goes Kermit. Kermit's on the four-way a little bit. Looks like Sean Clark. Oh! Takes out the athletic player. He is such a guy. I can't see over here. And right now, your leader is coming through. There he is coming down the back. It's Kermit Bus right now coming through. Oh, Jackson Rowe for leader. You have a new leader now. Ryan Harris. And he moves it to the spot. Moves it to the spot. Sean Howard out to two. Kermit into three. Don't be yelling at turn marker, guys. And right now, there is that light short course in the lead. Joe Howard in the black truck, too. Kermit in the gray truck in the three. Here they go in the center track. Coming over, jump and jump. Here he is in the white and multicolor, whatever it is. Here he is, coming out of the back with the white nose. Hey. Short course. They move over, thank you very much. Joe Howard in a two with the black truck, the white wheel. Kermit coming through the shoot right now. Trying to reel up in. Right now it's Ryan, Sean, Kermit, Sean, Joseph, Bobby, and Renee. The three minute warning. We've got over half a race to go. Plenty of time. Then they take the King, Kermit, and put him into the back with a short course truck. And there it is. Three down, three to go. Joe O'Hara, now you lead, coming to two, and you got Ryan into the three spot now. Sean in that black truck, Kermit in the gray, and Sean, uh, Ryan in the three. Here they come, yeah, you're coming to the center shoot. It's one, two, and three. Oh, and Sean kept in the inside, but maintained that. I mean, I was Kermit, Sean still the lead. Two and a half to go, see if Sean can bring home the bacon. Here he is, going down the back. Coming around the corner. Through the center shoot. Up, That's your leader. Up, up. Gets a little swirly. Kermit right now catches him right on his bumper. And here they go. Oh, no. There you go. 17-3, new no fast lap. Oh, and you got Kermit crashed up on top of the hill. Sean gets a little bit of break that time. 1.30 on the clock. Can Sean do it? Oh, hits the wall. Kermit right there in the gray, and you have Ryan Harrison three, followed by Joseph, Bobby, John, and Renee is out, I believe. Uh, I'm not out, okay? I'm not out, okay, he's out, Joseph. Okay. And here we go, and it comes down the back. Kermit all over the back of the leader. And they go, oh, John catches the pipe, but gets out of it. Look at that, here we go, we got a race going on. Here it is, you got no leader. Kermit now makes the lead. Sean's gonna lose two spots now because they're back into the number three spot. One to go, guys, one to go. Sean led it most of the way. Gonna give it up to Kermit and Ryan. 
See who else moves up ahead of him, and that's going to say you end up in three spot. 35 seconds to go, and right now it's Kermit. Look at maybe TQ and win this one, but he's got Ryan Harris all over the back of him in that truck or truck. Kermit right in front. Here come on, Sussex line. Like three center two. Wow, no one's left. Oh, there it is! Ryan rolls it, Sean trying to catch up. He's also going to make that number two spot, but he'll take a three. 15 seconds to go. Here comes Kermit around the corner. Right, right here, Look at TQ and win this. Nine seconds. It looks like we're separated by quite a bit unless something happens. It looks like it's going to be Kermit. Race is over. That's it. Sean, done. Renee, you're done. Kermit, you're done. Ryan, you're done. Waiting for Joseph and Bobby and Sean. Wow, Kermit, take it. So I thought that was pretty cool. We almost got a win there in the stadium truck class with our short course truck. So I thought it was a really great first outing for it. I'm really happy with the progress that we've made with it so far. Um, for those of you who've been following me, my plan is to race this thing at Masters of Dirt. So if you're planning on going and you have a short course truck, let's get them together and all bash each other to death in that class up there because I think that'll be a lot of fun. That's going to be it for this one. Like I said before, I linked down below all of the things that I have mentioned and the parts that have gone into this truck. So if you're curious and looking for that stuff, go ahead and check it out down below. Find that stuff there. And that's going to be it for this one. Um, probably get another track day with this thing before Masters and maybe tweak a few other things here and there. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. But for now, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.